He's able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my God is able to carry me through. broken hearted and sets the captives free. He makes the lame to walk again and crosses the blind to see. That's why he's able, he's able. I know he's able. I know my God is able to carry me through. Let's pray. Our oh, kind and loving Father, we thank for this day. We thank for the gift of life. As we're about to learn about the journey of Paul, please help us learn lessons from it and apply it into our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you very much for joining us today for the children's sermon. Which class is this? Junior, junior class. class. Nice. This is junior class. In the months passed by, we've been studying the book of Acts. Today we are in Acts chapter... 21. Very nice. Today we are in Acts chapter 21, and as we begin, the writer of the book of Acts, by the way, who wrote this book? Luke. Oh, Luke. Dr. Luke wrote the book of Acts, and in Acts chapter 21, Luke is giving us step-by-step -step journey of Paul from one island to the next island. But before we go deep into the story, will we remind uh, boys and girls about our key texts as well as the topic for today. Oh, Caesar, what's our topic for today? Boys and girls, our topic for today is bound for Christ. Bound for Christ, nice. And our key text, yes, how we? Our key text is, but why are you crying like this and breaking in my heart? You know I'm not only ready to be bound by Jerusalem, but I'm also ready to be bound for the Lord. Thank you very much, Harry. With me is a very fantastic team, a team from junior class. His name is Caesar, he is Aaron, and the only girl amidst boys is Howie. Her name is Teacher Steve. Now getting into the story in Acts chapter 21. Luke, who is the writer, gives us a step-by-step -step scenario of the journey of Paul, beginning from Kos, an island, then proceeds to Rhodes, an island as well, proceeds to Patara, but we could stop there and help the boys understand how these islands look like. Do we have a picture of these islands, how they look like? Yes, Caesar. Patara was a very important city. It had a beautiful harbor. It was a very busy city, just like Mombasa. Did you say busy? Yes. Now, busy means there are a lot of activities taking place there. Yes. yes. Oh, well. And it's compared it to Mombasa. Probably because of the sandy beaches and maybe the beautiful harbor. Well, from Patara, Paul proceeds to a place called Tyre. Now, at Tyre, Paul is welcomed by the disciples there, the believers there. They welcome Paul so much. And Paul, remember, is on his journey to Jerusalem. So Paul tells them, I'm just passing by. I want to go to Jerusalem. And so the people are happy that he's going to Jerusalem. Are they happy? No. They're not happy? Yes. So what happens? Yes, yes, Aaron. What happens? They said, don't go to Jerusalem. Well, they told him not to go to Jerusalem. Why? Because they were afraid for his safety. Oh, for his safety. But did, does Paul accept and stays back? No, no, he goes to Jerusalem just like that. He insists on going to Jerusalem? Yes. yes. Well, so the entire church at Patara, at, sorry, at uh, Tyre, accept Paul's decision. They accompany Paul to the shore, and then what happens at the shore? They prayed with him. They pray with Paul at the shore. And if I say the entire church accompanied Paul to the shore, what does it mean, the entire church? Yes, uh, how we? Um, the children's ministry, the women's ministry, and the... How we say the entire church means children ministry, Amo as well as the women ministry. They accompany Paul to the shore. And did you say what happened at the shore? 
What happens there when they, they get to the shore? They knelt down and prayed. Oh, they knelt down at the shore and prayed with Paul before he sails to another destination. Is there a lesson we can learn from here? Yes, Howie. The lesson is that whenever a, fam um, a family member is traveling, mm -hmm. you need to come together and pray for them. Very important. The entire church accompanied Paul and prayed with him. To us children, whenever a family member or a friend is going on a journey, they need to come together and pray for their safety. Very well. So he leaves Tyre and sails over and gets to Caesarea. Yes. When he gets there, let me ask you people. You know, Paul, when you are going on a journey like yes. us, we don't move with our houses there. So when he gets to the other side of Caesarea, who hosts him? Yes, Aaron? Philip. Philip hosts Paul the other side of Caesarea. Who is Philip? Who is Philip? Yes. Philip was an evangel one of the seven evangelists and had four unmarried daughters who proclaimed the word of God. Wait, many lessons are here. Evangelist had four daughters unmarried who professed the word of God. Now this reminds me of some, uh, can I call these daughters prophetess? Yes. Oh, I'm allowed. This reminds me of many female prophetess in the Bible. But... I might not remember their names. Anybody who remembers? Oh, we do. Okay. Caesar? Or oh, Aaron? Uh, Anna. Anna? Uh -huh. Any? Uh, Deborah. Deborah. Uh -huh. Hulda. Hulda. I remember Miriam as well, singing the song after they crossed the Red Sea. Thank you very much. Now, Paul, again here at Caesarea, he tells the entire church that, you know what? I'm not staying here. I'm going to Jerusalem. And so the people are very happy for him because he's leaving, isn't it? No. no. Again, they're not happy? No. Caesar, what happens? They begged him not to go to Jerusalem because they were afraid for his safety. What does Paul respond? What, what is Paul's response? He says, why are you crying like this? I'm not only ready to be bound by Jerusalem, but I'm also ready to die for Christ. So Paul was so determined to go to Jerusalem. At Tyre, he insisted. They left him. Here at Caesarea, he is insisting and they're almost leaving him. So what does the church here do now that he's insisted that he's going to Jerusalem? Yes, Aaron? They gave up and said... Ah, they gave up. Paul, now we give up. You go. And they said... May the Lord's will be done. May the Lord's will be done. We We've told you not to go. We fear for your safety, but you said you are going. All the best. Now Paul crosses over, gets to another ship, crosses over to Jerusalem. So now we are in Jerusalem. Uh, feel easy, we are in Jerusalem. But now the next question is, at Jerusalem, who host Paul? Because remember, it's not moving with the house. Who, who host Paul at Jerusalem? Again, Aaron. It was Nason. Oh, we get to Nason's place at Jerusalem. So he's hosted there. But remember, Paul is moving with Luke, Paul himself, and the entire company. There are so many. So I'm wondering how Nason, one place, one person, sorry, is able to take care of this big company. Yes, Howie. Because Nason is one very, one wealthy, one very wealthy man. Oh, Nason is wealthy. So he's able to take care of these people. I think here, if you look at it keenly, there's a lesson we can pick from here. Can you pick a lesson from here? I give this to Caesar. Boys and girls, when God blesses you with wealth, you should use it to advance the gospel. Oh, nice. Nason is very wealthy. So he's able to accommodate Paul, Luke, and the entire company so that the cause of the gospel is advanced, as Caesar puts it. Very nice. Now, Paul thought that when he arrives in Jerusalem, he will not be received warmly by the church, but the opposite happens. He is welcomed warmly, and from Nason's place, he goes to see, to meet some people. Who does he meet first? Yes, Howie? He meets Elder James. Oh, Elder and the James, the held elder. Elder, elder James, the held elder, and? And the other elders. And the other elders of the church. So they welcome Paul very warmly. But, can I tell you one thing? Not everybody was happy to receive Paul back. Okay, the elders, they received him. A bigger section of the church, they received him. But just a click, a small group, they didn't welcome Paul. They looked at him with a lot of mistrust. They said, ah, this man is not good, he's not honest, he's not genuine. I'm just wondering why this portion of the church will not trust Paul. Why were they doubting Paul? 
Why were they doubting Paul? Yes, Aaron. It's because mm -hmm. they thought that he brought, he told people not to listen to the laws of Moses. Oh, so there were rumors that Paul was teaching against the law of Moses. That's why they doubted him. Now the next question. You have another point? They also, th there were also rumors that Paul said that you should not circumcise their children. Oh, the law of Moses. So they thought that Paul was teaching contrary to the law of Moses. But let, let me ask you, was it true? These are no. Were they true? No. No. Hey, how can I know? Proof? Yes, Caesar. Because Paul himself believed in circumcision and circumcised Timothy. One evidence. Paul himself believed in circumcision and even went further to circumcise Timothy. Heron. Another one, mm -hmm. he attended Jewish pilgrims. Paul himself took part in the Jewish the pilgrims. Festival. All the festivals. Thank you, Harvey. Another one, do you have the last one? Oh, I'm thinking of one. Uh, yes. And he was also um, a Nazarite vow. Oh, Paul took a Nazarite vow. That's a big word for, for the children. What is a, a Nazarite vow? Oh, you know, uh, Harvey? Right vow is someone who doesn't do the following three things. The following three things. One. One will never cut their hair. Don't cut their hair. Two will never touch dead bodies. Never touch dead body. And three, he'll never, he'll never take strong drinks like alcohol or he'll wine. Never take strong drinks like alcohol or wine. That is a Nazareth. Thank you very much for helping me and the boys and girls understand who a Nazareth is. So we've learned that Paul was falsely, falsely accused. Now, Paul, for the sake of the unity of the church, for the sake of the unity of the church, the elders told him, Paul, there are some four men who are going to be purified. Please join them. You be purified so that you are accepted by the entire church. Then Paul accepted to be purified. But you know what? They saw him. The Jews there in Jerusalem, they saw Paul with somebody, with a man. Do you remember the name? Yes, are we? Trophimus. Trophimus. But now, I'm just wondering, is there a problem? Like, if somebody sees me with you, sees me with you, what's the problem with that? Yes, Caesar? Uh, they, were, they were mad with Paul because Trophimus was a Gentile and Gentiles weren't allowed in the temple. Oh, so that was the problem, <coughs> that Paul was moving with this man, a Gentile, into the temple, while the Gentiles were never allowed to get into the temple. Okay, so the mob, after seeing Paul, the mob does something. Who does the, what, what does the mob do? Yes. Aaron. He throws him out of the church. He's thrown out of the church. The police close the door behind him. Oh. Eh? And then they start beating Paul. Oh, they grab and start beating him. And now, when the other people in Jerusalem heard about this, they came running from every part of the city coming, and they came, so everybody was there. And they grabbed Paul, and they were still beating Paul. And now this noise went as far as somewhere. The noise reached somebody. Who heard this? Yes, Caesar? The commander. Oh, the commander heard the noise that there's something going on. So what do we do? Took chariots, ran very fast to where Paul was, and he joined the beating, isn't it? No. Uh -huh. What does he do? He comes, and then when, when he comes, the mob, the, the mob stops beating. Oh, the mob stops beating this, beating Paul. Is there a lesson we can pick from there? Yes, Howie? The lesson that we pick from there is that... Um, is that God is always on time. Oh, God is always on time. Thank you. Paul didn't see. He thought this was his last day. But the news reached. The commander came very fast, stopped the mob from beating him. Then they took Paul into the inner courts. As people were still trying to beat Paul, Paul spoke to the commander. In which language? Greek. Oh, in Greek. Can I tell you something? And then yep. the permission was granted. And then Paul spoke to the... Commander, but before they thought that Paul was an the Egyptian, Egyptian right? fellow that led 4,000 terrorists into the desert. So, why did Paul want to speak to the commander as well as these other people? Yes, for his own defense, he wanted to make it very clear that he's not a Greek, so was and an Egyptian. Thank you. So, was this permission granted? I'm wondering, was it yes? Yes, uh -huh. it, was, it was granted. Yes. Then Paul started speaking. How does he start it? He stands up and silences the, the crowd and says, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Cilicia, and I am a citizen of a very important city. 
Please let me speak to the people. Then Paul starts speaking to the people. That speech is part of our next Sabbath sermon. Don't miss Paul's speech. Thank you for joining us today. For now, how will you pray with us? Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for helping us and for helping the boys and girls understand. And help and please take care of us through the day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Welcome as we listen to Paul's speech next Sabbath. For now, bye. bye.